the great focus of really, in my view, of all great art uh, has almost always been the human form because the human form is the way of expressing the experience of being human and it's been the focus of art history uh, from the beginning whether you're talking about the um, ancient carvings of woman uh, that you find prehistoric carvings uh, all through um, the great ages of art it's always the human figure that has drawn the most attention well I think that almost by definition that the human form, especially the naked human form, uh, has to be central to sculpture. It doesn't mean that's the only thing you can do, but you know, if you think about this, it is the one unbroken continuity from the earliest pieces of sculpture we have, even these, the Venus of Willendorf, these depictions in a sense of the human form to express some larger human concern. So I think that that's one of the things that really makes Hart's work powerful is that he put himself right in the middle of a tradition that has been going on not simply as long as history, but all the way back into prehistory. The west facade of the Washington National Cathedral is a gigantic piece of high relief sculpture. The idea of the swirling chaos that presumably preceded human life is captured so dramatically was it was a kind of brilliant dramatization because uh, it had motion um, that is so rare. Now with Rick Hart, with his male and female torso, which are as fine as any classical sculptures of the human figure have ever been, you're looking at a beautifully formed human being that's telling a story just in their posture or their movement. Everything that we've lost in the postmodern era, the last 50 years, he is trying to restore. He was very aware of what he was doing. Rick is opening the door, so to speak, of a new way of seeing art, of a new purpose in art, a new civic spirit in art, a new sense of beauty in art, uh, a new uh, spiritual quality in art. And I think that one of the things that Hart does, uh, and rather, rather masterfully in terms of the religious art that he did, is he reconnects with the junction of kind of eros and the logos, you know, of the sacred and the profane, sort of just Christ's body crucified on the cross. I mean, it is, it has the uh, ecstatic eroticism that the Baroque Italian artists brought to religious art. In no ways is it uh, disrespectful of religion, but it you know gives you the embody the the energy of incarnation, uh, and that's what I think Hart is most powerful. His figures are heroic and romantic. The figure of Adam alone is probably the single greatest uh, piece of figurative sculpture in American twentieth century art. Going back to, to uh, Daniel Chester French's uh, Lincoln. In retrospect, 100 years from now, it may be more important. I mean, you have to go back to things like uh, the Lincoln Memorial to find something that's truly a successful work of art as well as a, su a successful public monument. Uh, Frederick Hart had a particular genius for this sort of thing. He could do a monument or a portrait that was true to both the artistic occasion and the public occasion. And I've always been attracted to that importance of sculpture. That's why sculpture has an importance beyond the usual, if you will, importance of art. And I've always found that fascinating in a kind of a Jungian way that communities very much need sculpture visual symbols of their creed and their culture. My first recollection of an artistic experience was being spanked by my mother at the age of six or seven for drawing a naked lady. I don't know if you're going to need that, but it's the truth. Yeah. <laughs>